G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wild Reaches. This is gonna be an absolute cracker, I reckon. We're, um, check out what's going on behind me here. Um, the boys loading up the trucks with a heap of cattle. There's more trucks up here. And we're getting access into some country through Jordan. Jordan's back on board, he's across the road there getting the keys. We're getting access into some amazing country in the Gulf Carpentaria. Um, but we obviously need the keys to get in there because it's a country where not many people get to go. So you're in for an absolute cracker. Make sure you stick around. I'm just making a coffee here on the side of the road. Um, then I'll go over and have a chat with the boys. We'll get in the car, push about 40 kilometers up to a turn off and then about 60 odd, no, maybe 100 kilometers uh, up a dirt track. Anyway, set up a bit of a base camp and then we're hoping to pull all the gear off the trailer and, um, and make our own tracks towards the, towards the coast. So this is the big one. Make sure you stick around. I'll see you soon. So slippery out here. I need a runner. Ah, it wasn't too bad. You just don't know what's on the bottom of them though. Like the, that second one was really slippery. That one then wasn't too bad. Yeah, it's a bit wet out here, eh? Yeah, it is. I wasn't expecting it to be this wet. Electric brakes. Bloody electric brakes stuck on again. I don't know what's going on with that. That was the same as um, back in season five when we crossed that river and got bogged. That's where I met Jordan. Um, electric brakes stuck on, and this is the second time this trip where I've been going through some mud and I look in the mirror and the, the trailer brakes are just locked on. So uh, if you know what's going on there, guys, let me know. Oh yeah, we're here. This is going to be hopefully the base camp. Um, and then from here we'll unload everything and, and push towards the coast. Three crops down there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see them in the water? One there, one there. And there was another one. I think he's gone. Freshies, you reckon? Yeah. Little freshwater crocodiles. If you missed the last episode, jump back and watch that because Jordan and I actually caught a freshie. Jordan had him in his hands. His beautiful little croc. We nearly kept him. For a bit of tucker but we didn't and then we ate some catfish and some cherubin so jump back and watch that one because it was pretty cool yeah there's the croc out there guys you just see his head his snout and his eyes so i'll send the, the drone up soon and we'll get an idea of what this place looks like um, and then we'll start unloading can't wait for this adventure this is gonna be a cracker it's gonna be a good eh? jordan's never been to where we're gonna go on the, in the tinny, so yeah. it's a new experience for both of us. I don't think many of the locals from town have been quite quite as far as we're planning. <laughs> How good does that sound? <laughs> The quad trailer, proudly sponsored by Makita. No, I'm kidding. They won't give us anything, the bastards. 
All right, we've set up a bit of a base camp. Um, taking the boat off, taking the quad off and all that. Set it up on the trailer so we're ready for, we've got a few things to do on it tonight and then we're gonna head off in the morning. Um, where are we? We're on Kurdija country in the Gulf Carpenteria. If, Carpenteria. if you haven't been watching the recent episodes, I'm up here with Jordan. Um, this is your grandfather's country. Yep. Um, so we're allowed in here and we're gonna try and get to the coast. Um, so yeah, we've got a base camp. We've decided to, because the track was so slippery and wet out here, we're gonna jump on the quad now and just start pushing towards the coast and just have a bit of a look around. See what the tracks are like, see what the creek looks like with the tide. Because yep. the other thing is it's a, it's a new moon, new moon. Well, there's no moon, so uh, big tides, which means, you know, if it's a super low tide in the morning, we're not going to be able to get the boat in the water and head for the coast. It might, it might be an afternoon thing. So, yeah, we're going to go just, just suss it all out, see what it looks like, and then um, obviously have a fish. We've got the rods packed. <laughs> always. Um, yeah, always. Um, have a bit of a fish, and then come back to camp here and have a big cook-up. I'm going to try and do, I don't know what to call them yet, but like, Barbecue chicken wings, I suppose. Yeah. What would you call that? Barbecue yeah. chicken rub wings. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. We'll cook them on the fire. It's gonna be fun. We should be able to have a good fire here, hey? Oh yeah, I think a hole so. or something. Finally, cooking on a fire. I can't wait. So that's the plan. So we'll see you guys down the track. See you guys. made it guys this last section here was super soupy through like um there's a bit of a drain there i'll show you guys later we forgot to film it but i might send the drone up on the way out so you can get a good look at it but this is where we wanted to just come and have a look whether or not we put the tinny in here and head to the mouth or whether we go way further but we just wanted to see what the track was like um, make sure all the gates were actually open or if we had to open any we could now that we have the key but yeah the water's moving too. This looks good. This looks really good. Um, like I always say, saltwater crocodiles are in this water, so we're going to be extremely careful. But um, yeah, I suppose we're just for the afternoon, just check this area out, walk around, flick a few lures, see what we can find, and then go back to camp and have that big cook up. Yeah, we'd get the tinny in right there. And this is like a mid-tide, I think. It's probably probably about three o'clock in the Arvo. I think high was at like six. Might be a bit different on a low tide. You've normally got a lure in the water by now, mate. What's going on? Oh, I'm still getting set up. <laughs> got yeah, the little travel rods take a bit, eh? Yeah, but they're good. I they like, are good. I like the action on them. Yeah, they're not. It's like a, a like a really good rod, hey. Yeah. Normally, you have to sacrifice the quality of the rod to be able to pack it down like this, but these things are bloody good. Oh, I'm gonna do the same. Set my rod up. Get a lure in the water. All right, a couple of little bit of fishing chat. I'm gonna try uh, Helco Laser Pro. I think this guy's about a 110 or a 120 model. Two and oh, there you go. 120, two and a half meters deep. Really good action, nice colour, um, and really strong trebles. So I'm going to give him a go. Pretty much my go-to lure, as you guys know, is the Slim Twitcher. Um, but I do like to mix it up, because I know the Slim Twitcher works, especially in that colour, that um, Fire Tiger, maybe? Um, yeah, we all know it works, so I like to try new lures, and then I can tell you guys 
what's working and what's not. But I can almost guarantee Jordo's cut a slim twitcher on. Um, <coughs> I didn't see what he put on, but I'll do you guys a deal. If he has a slim twitcher on, you guys get nothing because that's my guess. If he doesn't have a slim twitcher on, I will send a slim twitcher to whoever made the first comment in this episode. So if no one's commented yet, comment below. You'll win a lure if Jordo isn't using a slim twitcher. Let's go have a look. Hey Jordo, what lure you got on? Oh, a slim twitcher. In the pink one? Yeah. <laughs> I just got it hit Did you? At your feet too. So Jordan mastered the art of catching catfish in the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I saw him hook about 30. I don't want to ever see you catch this again. <laughs> Here's a red hot tip for you guys. If you're um, starving in the bush, don't shy away from any catfish because we did it in the last episode and it was surprising. Fresh water catfish from a like brown water lagoon and it was actually delicious. I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> bit of salt, a little bit of Tabasco. And you see the way Jordan's positioned there. He's positioned himself ready for a saltwater crocodile to come jumping out of that water. Oh, he's out there. Jeez, it's so hard to watch and film. I just want to go fishing. Maybe he's yeah, in that shadow over there. On the other side. Oh, this looks good. Oh, he's right on the edge of it. Mm. Might have to pepper it a few times. I think we're going to go for a walk down to the next corner. Actually, I might have a couple of cars here. While I set the camera up, if you want your merch, www.wildreaches.com. Shirts, singlets, long sleeves. Uh, kid stuff, a couple of different colours. There's like a green colour, there's the black, and then there's like... Oh, and the palm cockatoo shirts are back in stock. There's heaps there, so go check it out. Got a good one. I'm coming. Not huge, but at least 60. Yes. Mate, he jumped straight out up out of the water too. Good. Oh mate, that's a good one. Definitely 60. Yes! Yes! That's 70, bro! Good stuff! Yeah. Good stuff! Oh, stoked with that! That's a healthy fish. Stoked with that. Stoked. That could be my biggest one for the trip so far. But I think it is. Pushing down to the mouth, they're gonna get bigger. They're, they're gonna, gonna get bigger. bigger. Oh, mate. Thank you, buddy. You just made my day. Let him go, let him grow. Oh yeah, some good timber further up. God, that looks good. Look how good does this spot look? Nice and look around it. Yeah, a bit of a back eddy there. Yeah, there's no crocodiles, but Jesus, that looks so good. Alright, what I meant to show you guys before, when I said a bit of fishing talk, I forgot. But what I'm doing this trip is using the FG knot. Um, I started doing it on the last trip because the bigger leader, this is 70 pound and it's like 0.9 of a millimetre thick, it's quite thick. Um, the, the knot that I normally use, which I can't think of the name, I think it's, I call it a double Albright, but I don't know if that's right. Um, it doesn't cinch down properly. So this is an FG. Um, you can see I've, I've got a tiny little tag of braid that I've, I've actually just tied a knot in, like a half hitch or double half hitch. Um, I've cinched the end of the leader tag so it can't pull through, but it's a very, well, quite a neat knot. Um, yeah, I seem to like it. So 
FG knot. Um, I can show you guys how to do that later. Send, send us a comment if you want me to show you how to do it. When you use soft plastics, this is the big guy I'm going to use, which... Atomic Plazos. This guy is a, a jerk minnow, 7 inch jerk minnow. Um, I'm going to use this big fella with it. It's rigged weedless, so sinker on the bottom. When the fish bites it, the, the hook obviously comes up. I always use a loop knot. I call this a loop knot. So just a half hitch. Um, and then through the hole or through the hook then you go back through the half hitch around your main line three times one two three and then back up through that half hitch grab it pull tight okay there you go and the reason for that I always cut the tag off but the reason for that is then the plastic can swim freely on that loop, right? If you if you were to do a solid knot to that, it's not going to swim properly, as opposed to, you know, it can just do what it wants, like that. There you go, guys. Bit of fishing talk. We're moving on. Can't believe we didn't get a bite out of that spot. It looked amazing for like. 60, 70 meters seem to have it all. Anyway, we're gonna move on up the river, see if we can find anything else significant. And then make a plan from there. See the pigs have been in here. Something in here they like. Might be mud shell. Yeah, we get a cast out there maybe. Get dinner prepped. And then tomorrow, do you think we put the boat in here or do you think we push further down towards the coast? Well, because that big gate up there is open, we could push even further to the coast. Hopefully, right. we can get to that three ways um, where this, this creek runs back off. Yeah. That other three ways. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the further we, that we can get to the coast, the, the less we need to worry about the tide to get back. You know, if it's a lowish tide, and we want to come back up, the further up the river we got to go, the, the more, likely, more likely we are to get stuck. So, mm. ideally we push as far as we can on the quad. Yep. That'll be fun. Give that new trailer a workout.
cool. Yeah, I got some good ones. Home sweet home. That was a mighty ride. Just three sections, hey. Some bits were fine and then other bits were super muddy. Yeah, it just pulls up. So yeah, quite handled it, quite loved it. Yeah. Oh, back hey, again. Look at that. He's big. <laughs> Has he got a hollow? Yeah, he's big. All right, I might get a get a fire prepped. Get a fire prepped. Get dinner prepped. I've never done this chicken before, so I'm just winging it. Hopefully, it's good. But it's basically like um, buffalo wings, you know, like barbecue chicken wings, which is going to be bloody nice. It's just a nice change up, you know. When you're eating lots of fish, it's nice to throw some chicken in every now and then. When you're at base camp and you got a fridge and a camp oven, here they are. Oh, nice, they're ready to thaw it out. It is hot. Let's get a drink. So, this is why we've made a base camp here and didn't try and push further in. We've had a lot of wet weather lately, which is strange, but a lot of wet weather on the Cape at the moment and um, a lot of this country is really flat black soil country it's nasty stuff so as you saw there was already a lot of puddles around and um, if this sets in you know and you are way down at the coast you just sort of panic a bit thinking shit we're not going to get out of here whereas this way I know from here we can keep we can get out with the cruiser and the quad bike towing the boat and pretty much get through anything so that was this so good dry season in Cape York uh, at least we get a, get a good wash. Good shower. Yeah, you can see how it all runs off though. Look at this. It's just, it's just that little bit of rain. We're starting to push through and fill up that dam. Wow, look at it all rushing through there. Doesn't take much, eh? Hey. Just come down and grab some paper bark. And there's a little keelback snake. How cool is he? Maybe he's just come out with that rain. Out to knock off some frogs or something for dinner. It is beautiful. All right. I'm, yeah, I've just come down to get some paper off the Malaluka. Normally you can rip off, yeah, see that? And underneath it's a bit drier. Which is going to make it a lot easier to get this fire going. Beautiful, that should do it. Where's his snake going? We're getting some really good coals under there. So the idea then is, as I said, I didn't have much of an idea how I was going to do this. I thought I'd do it all in the camp oven. Thank you to Rick for supplying the camp oven. It's one of these ones. I don't know how to um, pronounce it. Can you guys read that? Bidari, Biduri, something like that. Um, but it's it's really lightweight and that's why Rick Rick actually got it got it for me for a Christmas present which is epic. Rick was from season five, I think the last season. We met Rick at a river mouth in the middle of nowhere and um, we pulled in, had a chat with him and turned out to be an absolute legend. So thank you, Rick. Um, you're a good bloke. Um, so I thought I'd do the whole lot in there, but the only trivet I've got is tiny, as you can see. Um, so I think what I'll do is use the Osbri. Now I absolutely love these things. This is another product that you guys have got to get around. This is the Camp Bri by Osbri. Packs down to nothing. Um, basically that's going to go on the fire as like a frame. If you've watched the show before, you've seen us use this to cook barramundi, to cook mud crabs, to cook all sorts of vegetables. Um, it's such a good bit of kit and it packs down to nothing, which I absolutely love, you know, the tinny drifts and that. So this is going to sit on the fire. And again, you can smoke things, you can, um, you can, I'll show you in a sec. So you can set it up on these two and have it hanging like vertically and smoke it, which is what I think I'm going to do. Or you've got your levels, one, two, three, to sit your grill or your basket in. So I'll show you that in a sec, we'll get to that. But I'll just get this fire looking really good. Get it nice and hot. Um, now that we're cooking on the flame and not so much on the coals, um, meat, it's good, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'll just get this chicken ready and then we'll get it on the fire. How's this afternoon? 
it's gone from like a, a downpour and flood to just absolutely beautiful this is my favorite time of day guys this color in the sky you know the cast these beautiful shadows everywhere it's just magic so i'll get the chicken ready and i might even send the drone up show you guys around i love it love this stuff all right time for a cook up now i'm going to risk it without a microphone because i can't be bothered putting a microphone on um and it's there's no wind should be okay there's no background noise um what we're going to do tonight is uh, like barbecue wings, like I said earlier, like buffalo wings, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, this is inspired by a fellow named John. Actually, let me get his. I have no reception, but I can see. All right, this is inspired by John, who is the underscore gourmet underscore camp underscore chef. The gourmet camp chef. Um, now, John also runs the Australian branch of Front Runner, which you see, you know, all the roof racks and stuff, stuff that I'm running this season, amazing gear. The, boxes storage boxes bags anyway all that kind of stuff he did inspire me with this he said you should do it i've lost the recipe i have no reception so i'm just gonna wing it i'm gonna use onion powder these are like the basics that i always carry onion powder oh that's cumin sorry onion powder garlic powder cumin like ground cumin and paprika um, i'm gonna load it with that salt and pepper and some peanut oil i'm gonna put all of that into a bowl um, now I've got some big chicken legs here, um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop all that into there, smother it all up, get my hands in there, make it all like completely covered, and then I'll take you over to the fire and show you what's happening there. Right, so I'm gonna dump all that in there, all the chicken. Might wash that before I put it in our bin. Uh, load it up with salt. Pepper. Yeah, Jordan likes everything super spicy. Oh, I was meant to get more Tabasco this morning before we came out here and I didn't. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there's no chili going in here. I don't think it's going to be that spicy, but here we go. Onion powder, heaps of that. Garlic powder, <clears throat> heaps of that. Some cumin. Oh, just still got the cover on it. Now, I don't know how much cumin, maybe like, I don't know, how much? Paprika, paprika is the stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's heaps. <clears throat> about that much. Check that out. So that's about how much I put on there. So now we're going to load it with oil, peanut oil. Don't tell my wife. <clears throat> that. And I'm going to get in there and just massage it all in. These are going to be great. So the idea then is I'm going to cook them on the Osbri, which would be like, I think I'll sort of smoke them. So I have them, have it vertical in the basket. I'll show you the basket in a minute. And uh, um, cook them so they're, they're like, I don't know, three quarters of the way cooked. Maybe even like, you know, pretty well cooked. And then last minute, I'll take them back out, put them back in here with barbecue sauce. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. I'll load it up with that. And then I think I'll put them in the camp oven to finish it off. So by that stage, we'll have some nice coals going. Um, this is gonna be amazing. And then I think I'll come over here and just cook some rice and um, that'll be it. Just chicken on rice. All right, so this is the basket. If you haven't seen our, um, if you haven't seen the show before, you haven't seen us use this thing, I don't know if we used it last season, we probably did, but jump back to definitely season three and season four, where we um, you know we cooked trout in here and we've, we've covered it in like an Asian sauce and chucked it straight on the fire. I've done mud crab, barramundi, all sorts of stuff, mangrove jack, everything's been in here. So the idea is you load this up, your basket. Now I've only got six or seven here one two three yes yeah, seven and then you see these slots in here that one that one and even the bottom one therefore obviously you know different things that you're putting in there so you can really clamp them in so i'll slot that into about that height like that 
and then it's got this little slide here that goes over it, locks it shut. And it's got a bit of a kink in it, so as you push it up onto that kink, it really clamps it down. So now that can go like that, it could be vertical or horizontal in, in those, um, those slots I showed you over there. So let's jump over there and we'll chuck it in. Hot, hot, hot. All right, so I'm gonna drop this vertically onto here. Look at that. Can you guys see that? That's oh, awesome. And then we'll put them on there. Oh, have a go with that. Look at that guys. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be so tasty. So yeah, the idea now is basically let that cook. Like I said, like three quarters of the way, maybe a little bit more. Um, so the chicken's pretty well ready. And then I'm going to, I'm going to cover it in um, barbecue sauce and throw it in the camp oven. All right, I'm going to go prep the rice, get the drone in the sky. Absolutely magic. This is what it's all about, guys. As you can see, it's like six o'clock at night, sweat my ringer out. It is really hot up here still. Obviously the fire doesn't help, but yeah, it's hot. The middle of the day is bloody hot. And then this time of night, it's just starting to cool down. This is why I love it so much. It's getting cooler. The colors come out, it's magic. You start to feel really good about the next day, get excited for the mission. And then um, you get to send the drone in the sky and see how beautiful this country really is. Keritage country, if you get a chance, get up here, talk to an elder, try and get shown around, come and experience this. ready to throw in the into the camp oven so I'll take it over to camp um, cover it in that barbecue sauce and then come back and throw it in the pot and I'll film as much of that as I can I just got to get my glove because it's gonna be extremely hot oh mate they'd be so tasty just like that eh? let alone with some barbecue sauce on them <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh. Wish I got more. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> There's seven there, so we'll be fighting later over that last one. <laughs> I don't know, I reckon I've been in there for about 25, 30 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, they're cooked through, that's good. So basically, chucking it into the camp oven now, I'm pretty sure is just to like, with, with like throw the sauce, oh look at that bit. Go it no. mate, go it. No, you have it. You sure? All right, I'll have it. Oh, look at that already. Crunchy <laughs> bit. Damn it, that looks so good. <laughs> That was. All right, now I'm just gonna load it up with baby rays. Lather it up. I was saying we forgot to um stop and get Tabasco. Mmm. Gonna be a bit short on Tabasco this trip. We knew it. We'll save it. We'll save it for the for when we need it. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty well it. I'm just going. Chuck it in the camp oven like that, and then hopefully it's just going to sort of crisp it up a bit. Um, all that heat and the sauce. I don't know, that's the idea, I think. So let's go throw it in the oven. Yep. Right in the middle. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so keen. Have a go at that. Hot. So yeah, ten minutes and then we'll be eating. Oh, oh nice yeah, man. yeah, it smells good, hey. Yeah. I just wish we had more. <laughs> Why would I oh. buy seven? <laughs> Damn it! All right, let's get it on the plate. There you go, guys. How good does that look? So simple. Just like a handful of ingredients. And just on a bit of rice, I reckon it's gonna be delicious. Oh, the sauce, I just, mate, I just licked my fingers and it was amazing. Okay, a little bit of rice each. So from here, we're kind of gonna be roughing it. You know, we're going, going out to the coast, hopefully get to the river mouth and, um, we might do a beer batter or something, but I'd say most of the, the eating we're going to be doing is just straight on the coals. You know, mud shell, barramundi. I don't know what else we'll get, we'll get our hands on, but... Maybe we'll find a lagoon, we can yeah. pull some more logs out of. Yeah, some cherubin, that'd be nice. Oh, mate, it still looks like a good feed. I think we'll fight over that one later. Yeah. So... I got... Oh, you can have it. I've got some biscuits there. So <laughs> You're a good play. You're a good play. Now, I feel like I should be making it look pretty, like put some greenery or something on it, but I, I don't have anything. I've got some lettuce. That's not going to look pretty, though. Anyway, let's just eat it, eh? Yeah. It's all going to look the same once it's going down the old gob. <laughs> That's true. Mushed up. <laughs> there you go, guys. We're going to sit down and enjoy this. And we'll see you guys in the morning, bright and early, loading the boat, getting everything ready for this trip to the coast. Good night. Good night. Anyone? Yep. Woo! Thanks, mate. Watch me eat this real slow. Great Northern. You guys should get on board and sponsor us. Good beer. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.